lesson number 17 of ethics governance and sustainability so this lesson the very last lesson of ethics governance and sustainability has into its scope firstly the rule in Ryland's versus Fletcher then the concept of absolute liability then the cases under water pollution and corporate manslaughter now, to be frank the rule in Ryland's versus Fletcher the absolute liability and the water pollution cases have already been discussed in the executive so I'm not going to go into in detail in terms of the facts or whatever it is I'm just going to give you the basics of what actually is a strict liability and what is the rule of absolute liability and brief about the case study of the Bhopal gas tragedy. That's it. And then we will discuss about the corporate manslaughter because that is one new concept which is covered under this particular topic. Rule in Rylands versus Fletcher. So in the Rylands versus Fletcher case, the principle of strict liability has been given. So what is this principle of strict liability? It basically says whenever there is any hazardous substance in the peril that is in the boundary of any person and if such hazardous substance leaks for any reason and because of such leak if it damages anyone or any I mean any person's health or any property in such case the person in whose peril the hazardous substance has been kept will be personally liable so that is the concept of strict liability however there are five exceptions for it which are firstly the plaintiff's fault if it is because of the fault of the plaintiff then it's an exception you cannot make the defendant liable then if it is an act of God, no one is made liable. If it is an act of some third party, then this party cannot be made liable. And if it is an act of the sovereign, then sovereign is nothing but the government or any government authority. In that case, you cannot make anyone liable. And finally, if it is by the, with the consent of the plaintiff, if you are doing that activity, even in that case, you cannot make the defendant liable. So this is the principles of, principle of strict liability which has been given and then in the case of Rylands versus Fletcher which has been followed continuously in you know in many uh, cases in the UK even in India in many cases they were deciding it on the principle of strict liability however there is a deviation from the strict liability after the Bhopal gas tragedy and the Sri Ram Food Fertilizers case wherein the concept of absolute liability has been evolved so what is meant by absolute liability Absolute liability simply means strict liability minus exception. So this equation should help you understand what is the meaning of absolute liability. And that absolute liability, any person in whose peril any asset the substance is there, he shall be absolutely liable without application of any exceptions. Even if it is with the consent of the plaintiff, even if it is with the if it's if it is an act of the sovereign, even if it is an act of the third party, even if it is an act of you know uh, uh, with the consent or uh, with the connivance and even if it is a fault of the plaintiff in all these cases as well if the damage has occurred it is the person in whose peril the property is actually or the, the hazardous substance has, is situated who will be made absolutely liable without the application of any exceptions so this particular uh, concept of absolute liability you know is laid in the case of serum food and fertilizers so usual misconception for students is students think it is it, it has been laid in the Bhopal gas tragedy case it is wrong. So in the Bhopal gas tragedy case, this particular uh, absolute principle of absolute liability has not been involved. It has been laid down in the case of Sriram Foods and Fertilizers case. So what happened was in 84, 1984, the Bhopal gas tragedy has taken place. And after the Bhopal gas tragedy, in the year 1985, I mean, in, in almost in the same, uh, know, after like very few months after the Bhopal gas tragedy, another uh, tragedy took place in a Sriram Food and Fertilizers case, wherein an opium gas has been leaked. And after that, it has went, went to the Supreme Court, wherein MC Mehta has argued the case. And there, Justice Bhagavati had come up with the, uh, the principle of absolute liability, wherein he said it shall apply in India without the application of exceptions. So that is how it has been applied. And later, it was applied in the Bhopal gas tragedy case, and a similar judgment has been given. It was also reiterated in the case of Indian Council of Enviro Legal Action versus Union of India. So, one thing you need to remember is the first point that is absolute liability is strict liability minus exception. So, that should give you the understanding of what is the meaning of absolute liability. Now, under water pollution, there are many cases. So, Kanpur Tanneries or Ganga pollution case, Vineet Kumar Mathur versus Union of India, Ambuja Petrochemicals versus AP Pollution Control Board, and Bhavani River Shakti Sugar, Bhavani River versus Shakti Sugar Mills Limited. So in all these cases, the facts are almost similar. And what is important is that you know in one or the other situation there is a leak of some pollutant into water which caused pollution of water. And then in all these cases, the consequences are similar, wherein they want they ask the 
such units to be shut down or to limit their pollution pollutants right so that is very simple so in all the water pollution cases the facts are the same same like there will be one party who is polluting water and when the water has been polluted or say river ganga river bhavani or other such things in ambuja petroleum which is a it is the patancheru lake right so like that wherever there is a water body which is polluted these are the cases wherein it was decided that you cannot simply emit all your liquid pollutants into water into nearby rivers that is totally against the environmental policy of the country so that is how these in these cases it was decided <coughs> finally corporate manslaughter so what is meant by corporate manslaughter so corporate manslaughter so normally you know manslaughter means like killing right so when there is a corporate manslaughter so do you think a corporate can kill an individual so definitely not however because of the activities of the corporate if a person who is working for such corporate loses his life or you know he he suffers such a grave injury which is which has fatal consequences on his personal life in such cases such corporate shall be liable for its criminal activities and it shall it shall face all the criminal liabilities whenever its management does not take proper care about its men's health and safety which again you know it is this basically is intended to ensure that people working for the organizations do not lose their life on account of the activities which they take for the sake of organizations and if such thing happens the company per se will be held criminally liable now till now we have we would have seen only civil liability for corporates but this is one exceptions in exception in the uk wherein the company will be held criminally liable in addition to the director's personal liability okay so one case study under this corporate manslaughter is that you now there is this company cotswold geotechnological holdings limited g cgh which is a geographical survey company and there is one geologist which they have engaged whose name is alexander right so he was employed by him by them as a junior geologist and he was basically taking soil samples from a pit so now he was taking samples from a pit so as to do some research on it however the sides of the entire pit collapsed wherein he was totally crushed in that particular pit and the total sand and all was over him and he was not able to make it out and hence by the time they they recovered their body he was dead so in this particular case the cgh limited the company was found guilty criminal you know criminally liable for the particular act and they imposed a fine of 3 lakh 85000 pounds and now that was basically shared with the family of alexander white right but here what we need to deduce is that where a person who is working for an organization has lost his life because of the activities which he has which he was undertaking for the sake of the organization in such case the organization will be held criminally liable because the law assumes that the organization has not taken or as the organization has not provided adequate health and safety measures for such person right this is about the corporate manslaughter so this particular lesson do not you know do not uh, disc- think you know it's something new or you know it's, it's something different from the rest of the topics because this is de- talking something you know, dealing with cases and case studies but remember these cases you have already did in your executive so here the thing is you need to remember what is the what are the principles evolved out of those case studies so that will help you out in clearing any questions posed under this particular chapter okay. thank you